All right. Oh, boy. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one. See, we're talking about Game Explain. Now, I generally don't talk about other YouTubers unless something bad happens. Uh, every now and then, I'll, I'll, I'll shout out YouTubers in a video, you know, whether it's Super Metal Dave for being a source on something or, or, or you know, Player Essence or Spawn Wave or whatever. Like, I give YouTubers credit when they are my inspiration for something. But this time around... We have a controversy, and I, I kind of knew this controversy was brewing. It was just a matter of time before things became public. So you guys probably know what the largest fan-made Nintendo kind of core Nintendo, they do cover other things, uh, just like my channel covers other things, but core Nintendo YouTube channel is, right? It's Game Explain. I mean, beat em ups might pass them someday, but it's Game Explain, right? Game Explain has been around for a long time. Uh, they have excellent content in general, great discussions, great live streams, usually halfway decent reviews. Uh, and one of my favorite things is maybe like the trailer analysis videos they do. Uh, I find these to be very, very entertaining, very informative, especially when it comes to the Zelda series. But at the end of last year, or towards the end of last year, pretty much everyone that matters at Game Explain left and they all left right around the same time three of them went on to form a new youtube channel called good vibes gaming i'll put a link down in the description of their channel uh they do a lot of discussion posts with occasional reviews uh a lot of discussion videos like hour-long podcast videos i guess i should say uh and then they obviously have uh the uh, game reviews here and there and then there is uh john cartwright he was another major member he left to go join over at nintendo life uh, you know, he works a nine to five over there, uh, making a pretty decent wage, according to himself. Now, this is all fine and dandy. Employee turnover happens. Who really cares what happens at Game Explain? Well, I do, because I'm sure, like many of you, you've heard of Game Explain. You've watched their content. You've enjoyed these content creators. Heck, I have other uh, other newer content creators that I am friends with uh, that now work at Game Explain, and this is no offense to them, but the quality of Game Explain's content is just not the same which isn't a surprise because they had some very passionate workers there. But now we have found out uh, from these former employees, work conditions were not great. Work conditions uh, were horrendous. Uh, and for many of these people, this wasn't even their full-time job. They had to do this in addition to their full-time job. And I know what you're going to say. Nobody has to do YouTube. You are 100% correct. Nobody has to be here on YouTube. In fact, in this video, I'm going to explain everything that goes into different types of videos because i've done game reviews i've done guides i used to work and make walkthroughs for crying out loud i've done video walkthroughs i have done news videos and podcast videos and i'm going to explain all the work that goes into this stuff and just how little money is made from it uh, which is why i always tell people don't ever look at youtube as a career if you get lucky great but do it for fun but when you're a channel as big as game explain you do tend to make enough money for it to be a career for at least someone so let's get into what the accusations are. This is the three members of Good Vibes Gaming who brought this up on the very first uh, uh, new daily, no, today's news tonight podcast thing they do. Uh, here is uh, their take on uh, what, what happened at Game Explain. Um, I'll let them just talk <laughs> for a moment here. Like, what can we even say about this game that we haven't already? And that wouldn't, you know, derail this discussion for hours because oh, we seriously. could talk about this game oh, forever in terms of everything can, it did right. <laughs> I could tell you some things. Um, uh -huh. This was a nightmare to cover. Final Fantasy oh, VII sure. Remake was the worst experience I had reviewing a game in, in 2020. And that is because uh, doing no salt part to square. Um, mm, they yeah. So the review embargo for Final Fantasy VII Remake was April 6th. We got the game on April 4th, <laughs> right. and that is so it was originally our intention to have Derek review it. It was just like, hey, you know, this is definitely going to be Derek's game. And I mean, they just didn't give us time. And I don't know if it was lunacy or what it was, but I was like, yeah, I guess I could do it. I could probably beat the game in that <laughs> amount of time. And I did not sleep. I powered through Jeez. this whole game in two days, basically. And I mean... 
I don't think I've ever suffered more to make a video than I did for this game. I mean, you yeah. can, I, I sent Derek my draft of the review. I was, Oh, I needed to basically rewrite the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. It was, I mean, yeah. I had, I had a jumble of thoughts, but I mean, I literally thinking back on it right now, I can feel my eyes burning. Like just the, the, the incredible pain I was in to just get it done. And I remember like my, my wife, God bless her. She was like, she was like, I love you. I'm glad this is over. Go take a shower <laughs> and leave game yeah. explain as soon as you can. Like she, <laughs> I, I will be the first to admit that this is where nice. she just turned on game explain. She was like, uh -huh. you need, you need to get out of there. She's like, never do this again. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I probably this is not defensible. <laughs> I was like, I should, yeah. I should yeah. not. Have I, done I, this. I do, and hey, I said all my stuff I was going through, and the thing was, I was loving every minute of playing Final Fantasy VII Remake. By the time you were doing your review, I think I was at Wall Market. I uh, just, I felt so bad for you guys though, because that is especially in. for you, Steve. I, I wouldn't. That's. I would never have wanted to experience that game in such a way. And, oh yeah. And uh, of course, mm -hmm. that, that was not. You know, I, I was still doing plenty of work for Game Explain by that point, but I had certainly. By that point, you know, my wife had kind of turned on Game Explain long before this uh, for, for similar reasons in terms of the, uh, you know, work being put into it versus the, what I was getting out of it. And uh, nothing quite so, well, I did have one really, what was it? There was a game that I reviewed that I had to beat it in like two days or three days, and it was pretty rough. But, uh, but uh, I would not have wanted to experience FF7 remake like that. And that just, but that also, uh, is testament to just the game's quality that you were still able to love it and appreciate it the way you did. So as you heard them say, that doesn't sound like they hate game explain, but it sounds like they didn't like the work environment, right? Like given two days to review a game, you can blame square, but you can also blame game explain and the person who runs it. For those who don't know, Andre Seegers is the one who founded and runs Game Explain. The fact that he didn't allow there to be a longer leeway on the review is interesting. I get the review embargo goes up on the 6th, but late reviews are sometimes better than rushing a review. In fact, there are many late reviews out there from other YouTubers that have more views than Game Explain's one. We'll get into that in a moment and some of the logistics behind uh, the video because I'm not exactly sure how the contracts were constructed at Game Explain, how payments worked, but even if they were paid, say, 100% for the video content, which there has to be a split because um, – there's, you know, in terms of the work for a game review, you have the person playing it, you have a person writing it, then obviously you had Derek up there who was editing the written part, uh, then you have the voice work done, which, you know, whatever, you could, you could do that voice work yourself, and then obviously you have all the gameplay recorded clips and all the editing and all that that goes into it. Typically, a game explainer is probably a two or three person job, although at many other YouTube channels, it's just one of us that does all that work, although... We obviously then get to skip the whole peer reviewing and, and, and editing aspect because we don't have anyone to peer review. Uh, but it's worse than this. So John, so these three left and they formed Good Vibes Gaming. Good Vibes Gaming has 36, you know, almost 37,000 subs. Uh, good people. They clearly are not doing Good Vibes Gaming for a living. It is something they do on the side. And of note, many of these people had jobs the entire time they were working at Game Explain because Game Explain did not pay enough despite being a massive channel uh for these people to do it for a living yet you wouldn't know that based on the amount of videos that had their voice work and uh you know editing put into it because obviously they were doing a crap load of work well having wives and children and everything in between and obviously they were paid for it they were paid employees but they weren't really paid that much so john carwright was another major game explain person who left uh, and it says, so I don't, uh, so this one guy, Matthew Banky, Operation Starfall, says, I don't know how many people out there have been following the drama on Game Explained subreddit, because we're going to get to that in a moment. Uh, but basically, during a discussion on Good Vibes Gaming, today's news tonight, the former Game Explained employees briefly talked about how rough their jobs were. And then the one guy says, TLDR, they quit because we had a lot of job. Uh, kind of weird English there. Sadly, the oversaturated work will come again when Good Fives Gaming goes big and the natural course of the YouTube channel. So he's basically saying that, hey, you know, whatever happened to him there is just going to happen to him all over again at Good Vibes Gaming if it ever gets big. John Cartwright, who used to work uh, at Game Explained 2, who left, said, I'm doing a healthy 9 to 5 at Nintendo Life and doing better than ever for myself. I don't think anyone at Good Vibes Gaming will ever need to lose sleep and family time working. And that was a huge thing. They lost sleep, they lost family time, and they weren't paid hardly anything for it. In fact, 
Some of the accusations are as low as one to two dollars per hour for work. So this is the the, the game explain subreddit. It's just a mess right now because what happened is as this story was breaking on here, uh, a moderator of the channel, user game explain, went ahead and started deleting posts that talked about this and that user is an official user account been confirmed of the game explain youtube channel and it's highly likely that andre seegers himself was the one shutting down these posts now a moderator above his head has gone ahead and basically booted andre off of the subreddit so even though this is game explain subreddit andre abused his powers to silence criticism uh, and that is not allowed in uh, reddit's terms of service so he's been booted out and lost his mod powers on here so he can't stop people from basically exposing what's been happening at game explain behind the scenes instead of re responding respectfully like he could have and maybe explain the whole youtube landscape like i'm about to do uh he could have, have gone about this differently now before i get into more of this i, I do want to remind you we are doing a giveaway right now i'm giving away a playstation 5 an xbox series x or a nintendo switch information how to enter is down in the description i wish everyone luck only thing I really request, obviously, out of all of the, the, the ways to enter is that you're subscribed to the channel uh, because we're, we're trying to grow here ourselves and maybe avoid some of the $1 to $2 an hour thing. In fact, it's actually worse than my channel, but we'll get into that in a moment. I'm not actually going to complain about it because I make my content whenever I damn well feel like it and don't hold myself to really strict schedules. Uh, like it happens at a channel like Game Explain, which is known for putting out you know sometimes a dozen plus videos in a given day. All right. So here's the, 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 this post that originally got things banned, um, and we're, we're just going to read uh, some of this stuff. So the Good Vibe Gaming Group, consisting of former Game Explain members Ash, Steve, and Derek, have finally given a full confirmation on why they left the channel, and it turns out it was due to similar things shared earlier when they made Good Vibes Gaming. There was just too much work and pressure to put out news, updates, reviews. However, it wasn't until yesterday that we finally got a full idea of how bad working conditions they had to deal with and hang with me some of this are, are tough to deal with steve commenting reviewing final fantasy 7 remake was a nightmare we talked about that the time span to play and review it was so small that he did not sleep at all and he crunched himself to finish it on time so other competitors didn't steal their views his wife turned on game explain because of this and told him to leave game explain as soon as possible edit partially of this is due to square's ridiculous review embargo of course Game, game Explained still obviously wanted the review ready for the embargo, so take that as you will. Derek's comments agreed with Steve and spoke about making guides ruin games for him because of the repetitiveness. Uh, Ash said agreed with Steve and was glad uh, he weren't in his shoes. Even his wife, Basola, had turned on Game Explained. We talked about that already. Uh, there, there may be truth that there may have left on good terms, though. Andre may be attacked for his work conditions since he is the boss and responsible for this. However, there is yet to be more proof etc 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 and then andre went ahead and deleted the whole post pretty much verifying that these conditions are real and exist and he wants to hide that from the public so you might be like okay so what what, what else is there what else could there be well how about this from ash so there were some accusations accusations that um these people because they mentioned their wives specifically were manipulated to leave Game Explain, I think Game Explain's work conditions were so bad because of their wives. Their wives are the problem, not Andre. The wives are the issue, not the job. The wife, or wives in this case. So here's Ash's response to that. LOL at manipulated by their women, like we're property. I'll say this. If Steve was treated like a person instead of a machine and paid fairly for the amount of work he was expected to put out i would have fully supported him staying on at game explain however for what worked out to be around one to two dollars an hour between playing through games writing producing videos and maintaining and growing relationships with developers working to get codes for games etc i would have been a terrible partner not to encourage him to find a way to continue what he loves in a healthy way as far as him being a workaholic, he also maintains and has since before Game Explain a corporate 9 to 5 career while also helping raise four children. Trust me, he's extremely hardworking. Oh boy. Uh, let's just say this is not good. So the accusations are basically this from the former employees. They work to the bone. 
They were asked to work a ton in addition to their actual 9 to 5 jobs that supported their family. They were compensated like crap for it. They were asked to give up. They, they were given unrealistic expectations, unrealistic boundaries. Yeah, some of it's on, on getting review codes late, but some of it's also on, hey, find a way to have your reviews come out later but not lose viewership. Now, the Final Fantasy VII review uh, at the time uh, of recording had about 89,000, 90,000 views. Uh, and people are like, well, well, okay, how, you know, well, let, let's say he, he spent 40 hours to beat the game. Let's say uh, that uh, after that 40 hours, um, he he went ahead and, uh, you know, I had to do all the writing and note taking while he was doing it. So it probably took more like 50 hours, whatever. Let's throw in another 10 hours for uh, producing, uh, writing the review, uh, rewriting the review editing, et cetera. Let's just assume one person did everything for that review and spent about 50 hours to make that review. Uh, and then let's assume, this is a very big assumption, but let's assume that Andre gave 100% of the profits off that video, 100% to, you know, the guy who made it in this case. All right. So let's just assume that that's how, that's how it works, right? Any video you create, you get the money for. That's a pretty good deal, to be honest. I highly doubt that is the case, but I would say that, that that would actually be a pretty good deal. That you know, If Andre came to me and said, hey, instead of making your videos for your channel, if you want to make your videos for my channel, and then you know, I'll reap the benefits of, of having more views on my other videos, but you'll reap the benefits of getting all the revenue, great. That's actually not that bad of a deal, but it's highly doubtful that's actually the actual arrangement. But even if it was... I want to show you guys something. So let's go to my channel because I can only use my channel as a basis. And let's find a video. Uh, there are some videos on here. Let's find a video that has, say, uh, you know, around 90,000 views, 80, 90,000 views. So I'm going to give you guys a comparison of, of just a video I can. I can't go back to some of my higher view videos because there was uh, the YouTube apocalypse on my channel at the time. Um, but let's find something that isn't in October uh, and go to something more recent. Um, Let's say like this one, 21,000 views here. To give you an idea, you can times it by four to get an idea of what they made. Uh, whoops, not video details. <laughs> My bad. My bad. Um, I wanted to actually view the stats on that video. All right. So on this 21,000 video, I made about 73 bucks in, in revenue. So let's say, you know, get off the old calculator here, you know, times that by, you know, let's, let, let's be uh, a little uh, less generous. And let, let's just go, let's times that by three. Uh, so say the review made about 219 bucks. Uh, the guy spent about 50 hours working on it. Uh, and, you know, let's, let's just assume he gets all of the revenue. That works out to about $4.38 an hour. Now, you heard that it's really more like $1 to $2, which means it's probably not a direct cut like that. It's probably a percentage cut. So there's probably like an overall percentage that goes to, you know, if they do a buy video, there's an overall percentage that goes to the channel. And then maybe there's a, a percentage cut of that video that goes to the creator. Also, it's entirely possible that's not how this works at all. Uh, I don't know how Game Explain has things structured. It's chances are there's like a set flat rate you get paid per month. So say, um, you know, you're you're an employee uh, and I have you under contract and I pay you say fifteen hundred, two thousand bucks a month or whatever. Uh, but within there, you need to fulfill all of these duties and these duties include all these hours spent and you start to spend an insane amount of hours that works out to where you're working a ton, maybe more at Game Explain than your nine to five job. And you end up making fractions of money compared to what it sounded like when you got hired on. I know to me, it would sound great if Andre approached me and said, hey, I'll pay you $2,000 a month to be a host and, and make videos and news videos uh, at my thing. But then all of a sudden, I'm outputting three, four videos a day and I'm putting in, you know, two hours or so minimum for a news video into each vi news video. Next thing you know, I mean, that's eight hours a day. That sounds great. But then you consider that includes weekends. So... Yeah, and then that's still not enough money to support my family, so I'd still have to have a 9-to-5. So I'd be doing that in addition to my 9-to-5 while trying to find time to spend with my family. Oh, and God forbid that Andre says, hey, I need you to review this game. If you don't, I'm going to nullify your contract. Oh, and by the way, you have two days to review Monster Hunter Rise. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No way. No way. And when these kind of deadlines happen, you know who should take on the responsibility if they really want it to come out? Andre. Now, look, I'm not going to sit here and, and pretend that Andre's this big, evil, conniving person 
that is the devil and, you know, just shouldn't be on YouTube. Andre, I'm sure, is a fine person. I have had conversations with him in the past. He, he's been incredibly friendly. And it doesn't seem like any of these former employees hate Andre. And they don't ever accuse Andre of not working hard. Game Explain is Andre's baby. It's what he does for a living. Obviously, uh, they are on pretty good terms with him. But they definitely don't like that YouTube grind. Let me explain what that YouTube grind is. So I gave him a rough estimate on what I think he, he did for Final Fantasy VII Remake. I don't actually know. But my videos, in case you didn't know, my videos make an average of, say, $5 to $10. If it's a video that blows up, as you saw, sure, you can make $50, $70 bucks on that video. But there's no guarantee my videos blow up. I, I pretty much expect to make anywhere from you know 5 to 8 bucks a video that I make. Even if I pulled off that video in an hour, which, I mean, this video alone has over an hour worth of recording in it, let alone the research and the reading and watching the content, like, that's, you know, not much. Now, I don't do YouTube for a living. I do make money doing it. It is nice, but it's just a hobby. I have attempted to do YouTube for a living, and it's very unrealistic for just me, let alone if I was paying somebody else. You know, I had some really professional thumbnails being made for a while, but, uh, you know, no offense to the person making it, but he wants, you know say, 8, 10, 12 bucks a thumbnail, uh, and that's fine, but it only takes him about 10 minutes of work because he's really skilled at what he does. It takes him about 10 minutes of work to make that thumbnail, uh, whereas I could do a couple hours of work on a video and not even make that 12 bucks. See what I'm saying? Like it, it, It's kind of a, I understand his pricing and value and his time, but I don't even make that much, and I'm the one putting all the time into the video itself. It's it's one of those situations where being a YouTuber is not a realistic venture for most people. Unless you are working for a massive channel, which Game Explained is massive. I think what needs to happen, what, 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 if I could suggest anything to Andre, is instead of hiring a group, you know, three, four people, right? Um, hire one or two others. Pay them a livable wage. So I don't know. You know, I don't know if that's 50000 a year, 60000 a year, whatever you got to pay them, right? Find a way to pay them a livable wage and then just have them do Game Explain full time. That's what I would do. I don't know what kind of revenue they have. I don't know what kind of sponsorships they're working with. If they're not working with sponsorships, they absolutely should. Andre should find a way to make his employees full time so they're not working other jobs. See, this ask of... You know, doing beating this game in two days. Okay, get rid of the daytime jobs, and it's really not that bad of an ask. So if these were full-time jobs, this is fine, in my opinion. They would be getting paid $1 to $2 an hour, though, if it was their full-time job. They Andre needs to find a way to, and I think all big YouTubers that, that want to rely on others' time, they need to find a way to compensate them uh, and have them feel as if Game Explained is a real job that they could support their family on. Sounds like Andre is the only one who really makes enough off it to do it for a living. And I understand he might want a larger team. He might want a larger set of editors. But you know what? If you narrow it down to two or three people, you can end up producing a lot higher quality content. And I point out to tech tubers all the time because tech YouTubers that are around a million subs or so, uh, out of the same thing, they have like one or two other full-time employees. Full time. You know, they might have a cameraman and an editor and then themselves. You know, Linus Tech Tips is massive and they have like a huge team, but they're different. They have a whole bunch of different channels. When I'm just talking about an individual channel, I you're going to have a hard time pressing me and convincing me that Game Explained can't afford to have one to two other full time employees. And that's just what they should do. That, that to me is the best step forward for Game Explained um, based on the work being asked because I know how much work it takes to make YouTube videos, to make reviews to make guides, to uh, do analysis videos, even news videos, which admittedly, I do news videos, and they are the easiest video t content type to make. They require the least amount of editing and uh, the least amount of research and all that. Like, it, they're not that hard to do. They're fun, but I'm not going to sit here and pretend my videos are difficult. This video I'm making now is maybe one of the longest and more difficult ones I've, I've, I've made in a little while now, and but still, it takes time. Time away from my children, time away from my fiance, time away from other things I could be doing, like playing games. 
Um, and I know some people are going to say, well, playing games shouldn't really be considered part of that. It is if you're doing it for a job. If you're if you're reviewing a game, you absolutely would not be rushing through a game in two days, would you? Would you? If you were just playing it on your own, would you be rushing through Breath of the Wild in two days? Maybe you would. Maybe you're that crazy. But most of us are going to take our time. We might play it a lot. We might play it for six or seven hours in a day. But we're not trying to beat that game in a day or two or three. We're trying to experience as much as we can as much as we want. So, I don't know. Just me. I don't think Game Explain is evil. I think they need to change... Personally, I feel like they need to change their business strategy uh, to create a healthier environment long haul. I think some of my friends that are working at Game Explain right now, they're probably happy in the moment, but the grind is going to be real over the years and it's going to beat them down as well. And I hope that they learn from that as well. And I hope Andre learns from this whole experience. And trying to silence people talking out about Game Explain to me is probably worse than anything. Andre, you've created a behemoth. You've created a behemoth where, despite bad work conditions, these former employees still have nice things to say about you. So you are generally a good person. Just change your business strategy, you know, and move on. these They're all moving on. They're all happier for it. You move on and create a better business moving forward. We all need to learn as we go. This is why I personally am not even considering paying someone for thumbnails or hiring or doing anything crazy until my channel is at a point that I can support my family. And if I can support my family at you know a livable wage, great. Then I need to get even bigger than that before I can even think about hiring an editor and all that. I do all my work myself. I do all my research. I do my, all my own research, all my own writing, all my own editing, all my own camera work, which is why there's been issues now and then with the camera, audio work. Everything's on me. And I'm learning as I go, just like many other YouTubers are. But I'm also not trying to do this for a living. So, yeah, this video is probably only going to make me a couple bucks because most people aren't going to care. It's all right. Because we're all here because we want to be, right? I am Nathaniel Rubblejans from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. Help this channel grow. Let's hit 70,000 as soon as we can. Heck, if we hit it this month, I'm giving away two PlayStation 5s, Xbox Series Xs, or Nintendo Switches this month. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Oh, by the way, go subscribe to Good Vibes Gaming if you're like a fan of that original Game Explain crew. You know, the the people beyond Andre. Because it, it got some good stuff going on there. So does Nintendo Life. You know what? Uh, John's working at the Nintendo Life YouTube channel. I'll put a link down to them as well. I love Alex over there. Uh, the guy who, who, who runs all that. And also, they have this guy named uh, Zion over there. Zion. Girl of the 20s. He's not a girl, but uh, dude, he, he, he's a good buddy of mine. Uh, he actually used to work for me back in the day at Zelda and Informer. That's right. I used to be his quote-unquote boss um he's a good guy we've, we've been to e3 together love him as well man he's uh doing great work over there too so shout out to those two youtube channels they, they will definitely be in my there well, when the channel i spent in my regular watch for a while i'm gonna add good vibe gaming in as well um because i'm really happy for those people that have uh pretty successful careers um so yeah there you go all right i'll catch you guys later peace